On Sunday, the first day of Holy Week, Jesus made an entrance, but on Monday, he made a scene. Today's story is a bit strange, or at least it may feel that way at first. It may feel a bit out of character for Jesus because it's the story about the moment he walked into the temple with a whip in his hands and creates utter chaos. But stick with this story because there is more going on than what meets the eye. And before we get started, remember, we live in such a fast-paced world. There is probably a voice in your head right now wanting me to speed up so you can cross this episode off your list. Maybe you're even listening at 1.5 or 2 times speed right now just to get through it. Trust me, I know the feeling. I do the same thing, and I have to live with the same voice. This season is about Batting that voice. It's about flipping over the tables in our soul that keep us constantly moving at a hundred miles per hour so that we can take a breath. So take a breath, slow down, and let this story speak to you. Welcome to season five of Stories in Scripture, a podcast dedicated to telling the big story of the Bible one piece at a time. This season, we are following Jesus, day by day, as he journeys to the cross. No matter what time of year you are listening, this season is an invitation to slow down and remember the greatest act of love of all time. This is Holy Week. The leaves of the fig tree reached toward the sky, Babel-like, in defiance of natural order. Jesus suddenly stopped and stared at the plant. He frowned and walked over to it. He examined each of the leaves carefully. He sighed and looked down at the dirt, clearly disturbed. He had been traveling a long way to get here and he was hungry, but the tree had no fruit. His disciples stood behind him. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. Peter couldn't help but think of that strange moment where Jesus cursed a tree as his rabbi flipped another table in the temple courtyard. The other disciples were no doubt thinking of other more immediate thoughts. Peter thought of that fig tree. He couldn't help but find some vague meaning between the two events. Just moments earlier, Jesus had entered the temple courtyard. Maybe it was the same sigh. Maybe it was the same defeated look. Maybe it was the same frown and careful inspections of the sacrifices being sold. But Peter could see that the money changers and merchants had angered his rabbi. These men were taking advantage of the weary travelers who had come a great distance to celebrate the freedom that came from God's promises. They knew that proper sacrifices would not last such a journey. Instead of offering these poor people a fair exchange so that they may worship God, these men overcharged in the temple, in the dwelling place of God. Peter, lost in his thoughts, came to the present and heard Jesus shouting, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The money changers and sellers were too shocked to stop him. No one had ever done such a thing. Violence in the temple was unheard of. Who was this man that dared keep God's people from worshiping properly? Jesus heard the whispers. One man tried to reason with Jesus, but was met with the same response. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The man retreated quickly. Jesus had begun to attract a crowd. The people were joining him, glad their voices were finally being heard. They were sick of being extorted. The blind, the lepers, the poor all came rushing into the temple to finally worship and celebrate. Peter looked on in amazement. He looked into the shadows of the temple, noticing the chief priests whispering and grumbling at the scene. One pointed in the direction of Pilate's estate in the city. Peter understood the danger. Evening came, and it was time for them to leave the city. They followed the same path back to Bethany. 
Peter stopped as they walked along and stared at a withered tree, where once stood a tree whose leaves reached for heaven, stood a browned trunk that he almost mistook for a fence post. Then Peter remembered, Rabbi, look. They stopped and looked at the dying tree. The disciples felt a ripple in the air. Jesus smiled slyly and said, Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourselves into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Peter stared at the tree again. Forgiveness, power, faith, prayer, it all meant something, and he had a feeling he would get the answer soon. The temple was the hub for religious activity in those days. It was also where God's presence was thought to dwell. But Jesus was not going there to pray. Instead, he goes there and he makes a scene. What's going on here? Why did Jesus send the coins scattering and the doves flying away? Well, there are lots of layers to this story, but let's unpack two of them together. Layer number one, the temple was the place where people would go to offer sacrifices. The sacrificial system was one of the key components of their faith because to them, that is how they received right standing with God. But if they can't exchange money or buy doves, then they can't offer their sacrifices. Well, when coins go scattering and doves go flying, the sacrificial system comes to a halt. So think critically for a second. What's going on here? Jesus came not just to turn the tables upside down. He came to turn the entire religious system upside down. He came to be the final sacrifice, to make a way for all men and women to have right standing with God. In a way, Jesus was yelling, stop trying to offer all these sacrifices on your own strength. I am the sacrifice. His act in the temple on Monday was foreshadowing what he would do for all of us on Friday. But then here's a second layer. According to religious tradition, some people, like the blind and the lame, for example, were forbidden from participating in such events. They weren't allowed in the temple courts. What most people don't realize about Jesus overturning the tables in the temple is what happens right after. I'm going to read the very next verse right after Jesus turns over the tables. It says, The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. I love the Bible so much. Listen to what the Gospels are showing us. Right after Jesus comes through and turns everything upside down, suddenly, The blind and the lame feel welcome in the temple courts, in God's presence, because the sacrificial system said, hey, here's how you get right standing with God. But Jesus said, I am the sacrificial system. I am how you get right standing with God, and everyone is welcome. Jesus came into Jerusalem and made a statement. This isn't angry, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, Jesus. This is subversive. I'm here that you may have life and life to the full, Jesus. It's no wonder the religious leaders were so angry with him. You're probably beginning to see why Jesus finds himself hanging on a cross by the end of this week. Today, As we continue to get ready to celebrate the resurrection on Sunday, take a moment to stop and ponder what Jesus did for you. 
I'm going to read this story one more time, and as I do, picture him ruthlessly eliminating any system that could try to keep you from the love of the Father. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of praise, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. All of this was done for us, for you, because that's how much God loves you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Stories in Scripture. We hope this season is helping Jesus' journey to the cross come alive for you in a whole new way. To find out more about this project, visit our website, storiesinscripture.com, follow us on Instagram at storiesinscripture, and please be sure to rate and review this podcast. We'll see you next time for another story.